Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the brand new Duskmorn meta game. Today we're taking a look at a black-white reanimator deck as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. This archetype received a lot of new cards, including a Rite of the Moth, a 4-mana sorcery that returns a target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it, so if it does get destroyed it will now get exiled, which is a bit of a drawback, but costing 4-mana is a huge upgrade over the typical 5-mana reanimation spells, and then Rite can can also be flashed back for six mana so we can cast it a second time and then which creatures are we trying to reanimate in this deck? Well, the main one is a Volgavoth Terror Eater, a 9 mana 9 9 legendary Elder Demon with flying, a lifelink, and a ward, forcing the opponent to sacrifice 3 non land permanents if they want to target Volgavoth, so that's almost never happening. And then if a card we didn't control would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. This has also the implication that an opposing Cacophony Scamp or Hardfire Hero dying, now it gets exiled, so it no longer deals damage on the way out, so that's also incredibly relevant in the current best of one meta. And then uh, during our turn we can play cards that got exiled this way by paying a life instead of their usual mana cost, so it can also provide a bit of extra card advantage, but just getting a 9-9 flying lifelink in play that's difficult to remove is usually good enough. And then we also have four copies of the White Overlord, Overlord of the Mistmoors, which is a 6-6, and when it enters or attacks we get to make a pair of 2-1 flying insect tokens. It also has the impending mechanic, so if we don't want to reanimate it we can also cast it for four mana and and it will still make a pair of insect tokens, and then after a few turns we'll also get access to the 6-6, just have to wait a while. And the impending mechanic also synergizes quite well with Besiege the Mirror, which is a 4-mana tutor effect basically, but we can also cast it with Bargain by sacrificing an artifact, enchantment, or token as we cast it, and as it turns out all these overlords are also enchantments, so we can sacrifice the overlord, cast Besiege with Bargain, search up any card in our deck, and if it's a spell with mana value 4 or less, we can cast it for free, so simply get our Rite of the Moth, which can then reanimate the overlord that we just sacrificed to Bargain, so that's another pretty cool interaction. And then we've got a bunch more cards we can sacrifice to bargain to set up Besiege to find Rite of the Moth and cast it right away, including the Great Door, a 3-mana legendary artifact that can tap to draw and discard, can also maybe transform it to help us hard cast some of our more expensive spells. Then we've got the new Splitskin Doll, a 2-mana two 2-1. Two when it enters we get to draw a card and then discard, unless we control another creature with power 2 or less. So this is perfect, since in the early turns we actively want to be discarding, so we can put Valgovoth and Overlord in the graveyard, and then once we already have, let's say, another doll or some 2-1 two tokens from Overlord in play, then it will simply draw a card, which is great on a 2-mana two 2-1, two plus it's also an artifact we can sacrifice to bargain. And then the Black Overlord's great too, as we can impend it for just 2 mana, and then when it enters or attacks we get to mill 4 cards and return a non-avatar creature card or planeswalker from our graveyard to our hand. So this can also maybe get back a split skin doll to set up our graveyard synergies, and it can also get back a Liliana from the graveyard, which is a powerful planeswalker that can deal with opposing creatures. can also be good in control matchups, forcing the opponent to discard their counter spells, so you can eventually empty their hand and resolve your big threats, and it's also another discard discard outlet, letting us discard our expensive creatures to eventually reanimate. And then a Bitter Triumph is also a removal that can function as a discard outlet, or we can pay 3 life as an additional cost to destroy a creature or planeswalker. And then we get to the part of the deck that's specifically designed to beat up on all the monoret aggro decks that are swarming the current best of one ladder. So we've got Cutdown, of course, a pretty well-known removal spell. Elspeth's Smite, arguably better than Cutdown in the current meta, since it can exile an attacking or blocking creature by dealing 3 damage to it. The only problem is that our deck is heavily skewed towards black mana as a to white, so it's easier to keep up a turn one cutdown. And then I'm also playing the full set of Anoint with Affliction, just exiling target creature if it has mana value 3 or less, so the perfect answer to a big Cacophony Scamp or Hardfire Hero, and if the opponent tries to pump up their creature with the new pump spell which lets them manifest dread when their creature dies, the Anoint with Affliction exiling their creature can also prevent that from happening, so it's just a perfect answer, assuming you can get to 2 mana and the opponent doesn't have a turn 2 kill on the play, which can certainly happen and that's also why we have some one mana answers available. And that pretty much sums up our entire deck. The mana base also gets to play with a shadowy backstreet, which is pretty important to surveil when it enters. You can also maybe surveil one of these expensive creatures into the graveyard to set up our right of the moth. 
and then a fabled passage to fix our colors since we can't afford to have too many planes if we're running besiege the mirror which is triple black but we do still want double white to maybe impend the white overlord and then lots of black white dual lands as well so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see what the deck does okay we're on the draw we have some good early interaction no real reanimation plan but uh, yeah, I'm fine just keeping with double backstreet to surveil and our opponents on the red deck anyway. So, could keep up cut down. Definitely want anoint with affliction turn two if possible. Could just take the hit from hardfire for a turn, I suppose. But if I keep up cut down, they'll need to respect it. And we might end up taking out some two mana creature instead and keep anoint for hardfire hero. So no blocks. I'll just take it, and then end of turn maybe take out the Swiss Spear. But it's gonna hang on to it, and then keep up anoint for Hardfire Hero. Liliana could also sacrifice it next turn. So no blocks. Opponent's gonna let damage happen. If I anoint Challenger, they pump Hardfire Hero. So yeah, let's anoint the Hardfire Hero, even though Challenger deals more damage right now. We can clean it up with Liliana, assuming there's no other one drop. And Smite was a good draw too, although kind of awkward with a prowess creature sometimes. So I prefer just uh, minusing Liliana. So yeah, one drop removal, two drop removal, and now Liliana, so it's not a bad start against the red deck. Opponent is going to use Felonious Rage just to make a 2-2 in return, which can finish off Liliana. But this creature is a lot less scary than Heartfire Hero or Challenger. And they've got a Scamp as well, two cards left in hand and a right, so now we just need to mill or surveil some big creature into the graveyard. How about a Volgavoth? Okay, so we've got Smite, and next turn we've got a 4-mana Volgavoth. No blocks. I'll take three. And a Leyline of Resonance. Hard cast. Fair enough. Can still keep up smites, which we may need here. Cast rights. And we'll see how they handle our 9 9 flying lifelink with built in protection. It also makes it so their creatures get exiled now instead of going to the graveyard, so a scamp is not going to trigger when it dies. Opponents going for a Hail Mary. And uh, probably block Challenger. Hope they pump Scamp so I can smite it. Right, they have a Monstrous Rage anyway. Pumping Challenger twice is not going to help since there's still only one monster roll token. They only get one prowess trigger. And then... Uh, yeah, we can smite the scamp. So we actually gain life here. Opponent actually did find Might of the Meek of the Valley and trigger. Maybe should have waited to see what they revealed before smiting. And I guess, yeah, with Might of the Meek, they do actually get to trade for Valgavoth. Since they get to copy it with Leyline. Alright, so it could have gone better, I guess. So, need to find another reanimation target for rights. Can maybe start by playing the doll. And discard courtyard. And then now we can surveil and draw with another doll. If we draw our uh, overlords, we can hard cast them as well. Yeah, the ley line's definitely pulling its weight. But it's got two cards left. 
we're still at 20, however. But if they're gonna string together a bunch of Might of the Meek, they can potentially get back into it. Our opponent does have another Might of the Meek, so that's exactly what they needed here. So it looks like they're playing the full playset. Although no mouse to increase power, I'll take two for now. And a Hardfire Hero. We need to respect, although we did find Elspeth's Smite. So I'll send in one doll just to start applying a bit of pressure. And then we've got removal of plenty. So yeah, had I blocked something else with Valgavoth, we would have still had it in play. And then the game probably would have been over by now. Bones being patient, and there's an Overlord. So, cannot quite cast it for 7 mana, but happy enough making a pair of 2 ones. And then we still have one removal spell available for now. If we top deck Besiege the Mirror, I can sack the Overlord as part of Bargain and cast another right to bring it back. And our opponent's still hanging back, so now we've got shields up on two of our spells while the flyers can attack. Our opponent could have a cell sword in hand, and they're just trying to build up towards a critical mass of pump spells. So that's how we could still maybe die if we're not careful. Doll just draws a card. And Anoint is perfect, so we have three removal spells available. Feel comfortable sending in an extra 2-1. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand seems a little sketchy, no cheap interaction, also no reanimation spell. This is a bit more balanced. So what's our plan? Play doll, discard Valgavoth, and then I can maybe sack the doll to Besiege to get right, so I don't need the Overlord, I may need Smite for interaction. So I don't want to lose the doll since it's an artifact we can sack to bargain. Opponent is on the red deck. And yeah, I'll keep up smites. Don't need to prioritize playing the doll on turn two. Challenger's next. Alright, in this case I'll just exile the challenger, even though Hardfire Hero is a better one to exile long term. And I could play the doll right now. Just to present a blocker. Sure. Cut down is not a bad draw. Hoping they don't pump up Hardfire Hero too much. Swiss Spear. Three cards in hand. They could also just activate the Rock Face Village. Which is what they do. Alright, so Hardfire Hero, I can still cut down in my turn to play it safe. And our opponent doesn't even attack with it, so yeah, they're definitely valuing the hero. Drew a bit of triumph as well. Let's see what's next. Fable Passage, perfect. That's a fourth land for Besiege. So yeah, let's not take any risks. Just cut down Hardfire Hero now. And then... Should be able to survive a turn. May have wanted to attack for two, just so we don't put a target on the doll. Ooh, shock. Yeah. So now we don't actually have an artifact for Besiege. Now I can still cast it to get right, but it's gonna take me an extra turn to get it going. So I might prefer to just Bitter Triumph the Swiss Spear in the meantime, so we don't take more damage. So yeah, had I attacked with the doll, they may not have shocked it, and then uh, I would have had a Valgavoth in play right now. Right, Monstrous Rage, I have a response. Discard Valgavoth since we're not casting it. And then now we maybe have the time to 
besieged for rights. If I top deck one of my overlords, I can play those first and then sacrifice them to bargain. And I'm also taking some damage off my pain lanes here. Alright, let's see if our opponent can beat Valgavoth coming next turn. Does not look like it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And no early removal could be a problem. I do have Great Door as a discard outlet for Valgavoth, right, to bring it back. I guess Dahl could also discard Valgavoth. So yeah, we're a little bit redundant in terms of discarding and reanimating, but we're lacking interaction as well as lands. This is a close one. On the play, I think I would have kept on the draw. This feels a little slow without interaction. And this is a bit better. So I could, of course, keep two lands, two removal spells. Question is if I get rid of maybe the Overlord or Valgavoth. Without a reanimation spell, I think I prefer Overlords as something I can just impend for four mana. Opponent black-white, all right, so it's not mono-red. And our opponent's also on the reanimation plan. All right, so keeping smite and cut down in hindsight, not that great. Opponent's got the overlord as well. And yeah, it looks like right got milled, so turn four we might be facing a Valgavoth. Luckily Liliana's a good answer to it, if it's their only creature. But we do need to hit some more land drops. Another card you could consider if you're maxing out overlords is something like Scroll Shift. Since you can flicker the overlords to get them in play, re-trigger their Enter the Battlefield abilities. So hopefully we can draw into a land here. And still discarding Valgavoth. Unless we already have one. Opponent playing the uh, Unholy Annex and Ritual Chamber to eventually make a demon. So we'll see if they have the right. Given the Liliana in hand, I wouldn't mind. And yeah, there it is. Bring back Valgavoth. And I've got bad news for you. And because it enters with a finality counter, it's now exiled as well. I've come. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard and we'll hit for two. Face? Now, opponent does still have the Overlord going, Annex drawing them extra cards, so... The game's definitely not over, our hand's also not particularly exciting. And they've got another Overlord, they could maybe reanimate for six mana next turn. We're just gonna make a demon. Which, yeah, cut down doesn't answer, can anoint it. And then for now, plus. Even though I might be helping my opponent if they discard their own Valgavoth. But, uh, yeah, cut down's not doing anything for me. And yeah, opponent discards another Valgavoth, although we do have a Liliana on two loyalty. So we could just minus it again. Although I guess they're also going to have another Overlord coming in, so they'll have two creatures. So if I find an answer for Overlord, we find an answer for Valgavoth, pretty much. Can also get Liliana back with Overlord eventually. And our opponent's got a bitter triumph to destroy our Planeswalker. Alright, but they're also not bringing back Valgavoth right now, at least. We're not quite capable of casting the Overlord. I think I still attack with the doll. 
since if they block I can smite the overlord to exile it. So first we want to let damage happen, go full control, in case they had some more removal here. And then while still in combat we can smite. Because if I smite first and then our opponent destroys the doll, we uh, just got two for one. We still kind of got two for one, but at least the uh, overlord's gone. And then I guess we'll impend. Probably should have fetched the planes here at this point. Could keep passage in hand for another doll, although at this point it would just draw a card. I do have the door, which is a reason to maybe keep passage as something to discard, but I think I'll run it out. And our opponent does have a go for the throat for Overlord, sadly. So I won't be able to get back Liliana. Opponent gets back Valgavoth, and yeah, that's not a game we're winning. Harvester gonna clean up our tokens first. That's also pretty good. And once they put Valgavoth back in play, the life loss from their room is no longer going to matter. Alright, Besiege is not bad. So now I can bargain, sacking Overlord, casting rights, putting in my own Valgavoth right away. And hope they can't easily answer it. Now opponent's gonna have their own Volgavoth. And they're gonna gain two with the uh, Annex now. So we're kind of in a similar situation. If I attack with Valgavoth, our opponents might trade. They take it. So I can flash back right. I'm going for Overlord now. The Black Overlord could be a way to access Liliana. The White Overlord gives me more immediate board presence. Faithful, another way to reanimate. And they're gonna sacrifice three permanents to Volgavoth's ability here, actually. Can they afford to attack is the question. They are. Alright, I'll take nine. And hopefully make more 2-1s next turn. Found a Liliana. So if they were to somehow chump the Overlord, that would be nice. Is it actually happening? Harvester to shrink it down, that's fine. Do they have another one? Damage happens, and yeah. A Liliana clean up Volgavoth. Now, do they have another one to reanimate next turn with rights? Just an overlord. And then I guess her opponent gets to bring back Harvester to clean up my two ones. But it's still something. So maybe should have considered chumping Valgavoth. When I had the chance, opponent just casting another Harvester. Pretty good too. And this is why I was holding on to my land. Transforming the door doesn't do much for me, since we don't need more mana. We just need to draw into some action. Smite doesn't quite do it. So now we'll just play a land and plus. 
opponents got another Harvester, so they found all four copies, I think. Pretty good against our White Overlord, specifically. Faithful also just bringing back Overlord or Harvester. Goes for Overlord, in which mills Valgavoth and Liliana, so yeah, this game seems over. The Annex provided the opponent with quite a bit of card advantage, and they kind of just had the upper hand on the reanimation plan. Harvester could also be a decent answer against the red decks, since you can decrease power and toughness, but it does cost two mana, so sometimes you're just going to be dead on turn two if this is your only removal spell. So I think I prefer our builds when facing red aggro, but in the mirror match they certainly have the upper hand. As we draw another useless smite. Alright. GG's. Still a close one. Opponent of course also running Liliana, which yeah remains one of the better answers to a Volgavoth if it's the only creature in play. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got Smite into Anoint. Should be able to draw Swamp for Liliana to discard. And then if we find a reanimation spell, that's great. But we also have Overlord on 4. So I'll try it. And turn 1 Hardfire Hero, we don't mind seeing. And the Doll could also be a discard outlet for Valgavoth. So hope they pump. Want to quickly pass priority, but I guess your opponent ran out a challenger. Still fine to smite it here since we have another way to exile the Heartfire Hero. And we've got a right, so could be convinced to just play the doll. Since your opponent's unlikely to pump Heartfire Hero into two open mana. And I also just want to hit my land drops here. Alright, perfect. So next turn I get to play Backstreet to Surveil, maybe find land 4, and still have Anoints. Not gonna block. So we take 5. Hmm, Courtyard's a little awkward. I think Backstreet is still better since it allows me to set up right on turn 4. And another Anoint with Affliction cannot be bad. Yeah, just delay our combo by turn, but have another answer for the opponent's creatures. Now I can block to maybe bait out another Pump Spell. And that's not gonna work. Still take four off Swiss Spears. The doll doesn't have to survive here. Could also minus Liliana and fall to 8. I think I still prefer the instant speed removal option that doesn't cost us life and can maybe punish another pump spell. Felonious Rage. Can let it resolve, see if they have another pump spell they want to play. They might have a second main Cell sword they want to use to fling the Swiss Spear, which would have been five more damage here for lethal. And since Anoint Exiles, their opponent doesn't get a detective. We're still at nine. They can fling for three damage. But now they'll need nine damage. I will be blocking if they attack. Small chance they can trade up for Volgavoth, but that's going to take all their resources. And our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We do not have any early interaction, which could be a problem. We do have Overlord, sack it to Besiege to reanimate it. Plus, if we find a discard outlet, we can bring back Volgavoth. So, yeah, on the draw against the red, this is just going to get run over. But we do have... The uh, backstreet to surveil and maybe look for some cheap removal on turn two. So I'll try it.
Copper Line Gorge, no one drop. Liliana, that can discard Valgavoth, and we have Anoint with Affliction coming up, so I feel a lot better about facing down creatures now. Opponent, maybe a teamer ramp deck with Cornucopia, so they're also aiming for the late game. So we'll get a Liliana going. Can immediately plus. Opponent discards Brotherhood's End, can also damage Planeswalkers. If they ramp out Roxanne, I can still better Triumph it. Or minus Liliana. And then hopefully Volgavoth can go over the top. Alright, Boy's gonna fire us a victory, Liliana instead. Dealing 3 damage. Can keep plussing it. Discard another Volgavoth. And then we'll uh, try to impend the Overlord. Bonan did have a counter spell in hand, just cost him 3 mana. And the Brotherhood's End can clean up nicely now, although they're down to one card in hand. So if it's not a counter spell, they're in trouble. And they didn't seem to have one last turn. Surveil. And uh, another Valgovoth can go. A land would let me flash back, right? Maybe bring back the Overlord. And there's Roxanne at long last. Well, if I better triumph it, we can cast it with Valgovoth. So that sounds good. Or we can bring back the Overlord. I think I prefer the Bitter Triumph line. Gives the opponent fewer permanents to potentially answer Valgavoth as well. If they play Bonnie, we can exile the token with Annoyance. They're just gonna pass a turn. Alright, so step one might be to just attack. If they have another three steps ahead, I don't want to put a spell on the stack and have them counter it. They currently don't have three permanents to sacrifice to Valgavoth, so the whale only works if they activate Fountain Port as well. And then I could exile the token from Fountain Port in response. So, yeah, that's going to be good enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We do not have much cheap removal. Doll and Liliana's discard outlets still waiting for something exciting to reanimate. And then all our lands will be tapped in the early turns as well. So this one's borderline. Maybe with a few more untapped lands we can play Doll on two. And then maybe look for something to reanimate. Liliana giving us removal on three and then right on four. Wouldn't be a bad curve. But since I don't get to curve... 2-drop or 3-drop on curve, it's going to be a little slow, especially against red. Alright, now we've got Wright and Volgavoth just missing a discard outlet. I'll give it a try. Still got to draw in too cheap interaction if we're up against red aggro. And yep, Blackleaf Glyphs points in that direction. So hopefully we draw one of our many instants. Another Valgavoth can go, so yeah, turn 4 we can already reanimate without needing another discard outlet. So I'll take any removal spell off the top now, since turn 4 Valgavoth may be too slow. But it's got a Swiss Spear. And just 2 damage is acceptable. Sometimes slightly holding full control will uh, fake the opponent out a little bit. Make them less likely to go all out. And uh, yeah, even though we could play the Great Door, I think I want to keep up appearances. Since we don't really need it as a discard outlet. And 
Alright, they've got a bait splitter. Doesn't go on the scamp. And does. So that could hurt. Alright, we take it. Just three more damage if they sacrifice. Would be a six damage total with a cell sword, so we should still be alive here to play Volgavoth. Question is whether or not that's gonna be good enough. So yeah, had we played the door, I would have been able to set up a second Volgavoth in case this one trades, which is not impossible. But now with Volgavoth in play, if Scam dies, it no longer deals damage because it gets exiled. Same if they sacrifice it to a cell sword, which is maybe what they're trying to set up. Monster's Rage again, only get to keep one roll token. And a cell sword, so yeah, we're not dead here. That's just eight damage. Scam gets exiled. And uh, yeah, our opponent concedes, so they did not know about that interaction. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got decent tools against aggro. And then, yeah, at the very least we can impend Overlord on four. But we might mill something exciting in the meantime, or find a discard outlet for it. Opponent taking some aggressive mulligans. Maybe looking for that ley line in their opening hand, who knows. Well, they found it. Probably no need to keep up smites. Anoint is fine. So we've got multiple answers lined up. No blocks. Let's see if they pump. Mind of the Meek, so opponent would normally draw two. Now they get to draw zero. Surveil again. And another right doesn't seem needed. So, can impend the Overlord. Since we're unlikely to take lethal next turn with our opponent only having two cards in hand. They might have another Might of the Meek, which they can cycle on my Insect, although it will only draw them one card. Opponent plotting a Slick Shot now, should have that one covered. So now we just start beating down and go Shields up on our two removal spells. And I'll just pay three, I think. In response to the turn inside out, if they have another one. Alright, I might want to anoint here, otherwise our opponent gets two manifest dreads. Wouldn't be the end of the world. Maybe that's fine. Let them keep a pair of tutus, still have anoint left, versus our opponents on empty with one card in hand. Yeah, that maybe sounds better. It's mostly a concern if our opponent manifests more creatures like Slickshot and then turns them face up. But uh, yeah, either way, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand is not perfect. We can better triumph discarding the Overlord and maybe reanimate it with right. So I do just need to hit my land drops. I do get to surveil to help with that as well. But that's my whole game plan pretty much. Yeah, maybe it's still good enough on the play. Turn 4, Overlord could be good enough. But if we could replace Right with a land, it would look a lot better. Don't know if we need Anoint with Affliction in this matchup, and we know for a fact we need lands. So I'm gonna put it in Graveyard. Opponent is on the red deck, so Anoint could have been fine. Alright, now I can play the Doll, which can help me hit my land drops. And we know Overlord needs to go. And then... We found a third land at the very least. Not gonna block just yet. Plus we might want to use Doll to enable Bargain if we top deck our uh, 
besiege the mirror. Ooh, Dreadmoss Ire. I guess that destroys my doll since it's an artifact. So it could have soaked up one damage, but that's fine. Alright, now I'll keep up Bitter Triumph, I think. Even though Doll improves my odds of actually reanimating on turn 4. Challenger is next. In this matchup, happy enough discarding another right over paying 3 life. And then we could see a pump spell on the Swiss Spear instead. Alright, opponent going for Felonious Rage to trigger Valiant and I guess get an extra 2 2. They found a mountain. And another bitter triumph to draw. Now I think I'll try the doll, that way if we draw a land we can actually cast a bitter triumph. Perfect. And I should only need the one right of the moth. Now I'll have to pay three life to Bitter Triumph, so any other removal spell could have been better. And yeah, Red Ley Line is also quite scary. Still happy to trade for their 2 2. Point's gonna preserve it since they know that they'll need a creature to target. Still fine to take out Swiss Spear, since cards like Monstrous Rage are much better if they have several creatures they can target. And then now bring back the Overlord. I'll get in 4-2 with the Doll. And then, yeah, we'll see if our opponent can beat the uh, Overlord here with the Red Ley Line. It's very much possible if they draw well. One card left, no attacks. And, uh, yeah, get in with everyone. Can flashback right to get back another doll. And it's going to be tricky for them to present lethal, but not impossible. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got some early removal, Doll to maybe discard the Overlord, or we can keep it to impend. So we don't have a clear game plan on how we plan to reanimate the Overlord, but I'll still try it. And then since we're on the play, there's no real need to keep up smites, so I can just fetch for planes to save myself some damage. Opponent is on the red deck. No ley line, but a Swiss Spear, so yeah, Smite could have actually exiled the Swiss Spear here. Smite is also awkward in the face of Swiss Spear, since they can pump toughness so much with prowess. So I don't think I keep up Smite, instead, maybe go for the Overlord now. If we find Liliana, that can answer the Swiss Spear next turn. Milled plenty of Algavoths. Yeah, I can grab one as discard fodder. As long as we have one in the graveyard, it's fine. Opponent still on the rock phase village build. So maybe they haven't updated the deck with Leyline yet. Although Felonious Rage on Hero is gonna hurt. Would be good to smite. But now if they can pump toughness some more, we could be in trouble. So yeah, play the doll. Discarding Volgavoth, keep up smites. Since I may want to just impend the Overlord next turn. And then I can block Hardfire Hero, hope they pump it in response. And then we'll get to exile it. Village makes it harder for them to cast multiple pump spells, since it only makes red for creature spells. Opponent needs to consider the possibility of a cutdown as well. And a Felonious Rage is perfect, so now Hardfire Hero doesn't die since we exiled it, and also doesn't leave behind a detective token. Only take two. 
And another Swiss beer. So yeah, let's just make a pair of 2-1 flyers. They're still not going to be great in the face of Swiss beer. But it's something. And then in a few turns we'll get our Black Overlord in play as well. So top decking Besiege or Right of the Moth is what we want here to bring back Volgavoth. Picnic Ruiner is fine. One card left in hand. Can they maybe give it haste with another Felonious Rage? In which case I would maybe chump the Picnic Ruiner and then double block the Swiss Spear. Liliana's not a bad draw. At this point I might want to just make them discard. Let's surveil first. Something suspicious is going on. And then... I'm tired of your secrets. I think I keep the Great Door. Six mana is maybe still useful if we mill a Rite of the Moth, but I don't see that happening. Ponon did have a Cell Sword in hand, so that could have been scary with a pump spell. And now we just try and protect Liliana. Ponon attacks. Yeah, single blocking everyone is probably not going to work out. But uh, something along these lines could be fine. Or I could double block Picnic Ruiner, which is the scarier threat. If they were to pump it, but at least this way we trade for Swiss Spear. And that worked. So we're at 7. And Besiege was a great draw as well. So let's see. Can uh, just minus Liliana. Leave her opponent without creatures. And then we want to Besiege. And then I can sack maybe the White Overlord here, since that's pretty far from being active. Get right of the Moth. And get back our Volgavoth. Could have done this before minusing Liliana to get access to the Swiss Spear, but I don't really care about it. And then probably no need to attack with the 2-1. Just played extra safe. If we get to untap here, we should easily win. And that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Plenty of early removal. A Liliana. And up against Red Aggro. No surprises there. Turn 1 Scamp. So if I don't want to die, I should keep up Cutdown. Problem is, our opponent could still kill us through Cutdown by doubling enough pump spells, unless we just cut down Scamp now. So this is the safest play we can make. We can let the opponent deploy pump spells when we keep up Anoint with Affliction. But cut down does have some limitations. If it was Elspeth's Smite instead, I think I would have been fine just uh, letting my opponent attack. Split Skin Doll isn't a worse draw. Probably want to just play Liliana to start plussing in the near future. So we already have a discard outlet. So I'm just looking for something to reanimate. Right, Challenger can just minus Liliana for starters. No more distractions. Let's make this quick. <laughs> Off you go. And now a needle hat can deal damage when we draw cards. Fair enough. So, plus Liliana. Either a right of the moth or a land can go. Probably don't need double right. Although I could also cast one to get back the uh, split skin doll, even though it's not all that exciting here. Yeah, maybe I'll go for it next turn, and for now we'll ditch a land. Surveil, hoping for something big. Another anoint I'll keep. And then I'm most likely going to exile the Needlehead, but maybe our opponent will cast some pump spells on it first. Might of the Meek would draw them two cards, so let's say no to that. Mm -hmm. 
turn inside out is not going to do anything since Anoint exiles their creature. Otherwise they would have gotten to manifest twice. Plus Liliana. Maybe right is fine since we can eventually just flash it back. But uh, yeah, our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. So yeah, there's a lot of red decks in the current best of one meta, and as long as you're packing enough instant speed removal, especially answers that exile opposing creatures, you should have a good time, so then it doesn't matter too much how the rest of your deck looks like, although I was also impressed by Rite of the Moth reanimating Valgavoth quite a few times, and Valgavoth also has that added upside of exiling opposing creatures, so Cacophony Scamp and Hardfire Hero are not going to deal damage on the way out, and then of course a huge life linker is great against red in general, so this seems like a great deck to fight the current best of one meta. If you were to play this in best of three, I would make quite a few adjustments, probably don't need quite as many cheap instant speed answers, and you can maybe diversify the types of threats you're trying to reanimate. And then in the sideboard, you might want to have some targeted discard spells to fight opposing control strategies. You might also want answers to opposing graveyard hate, so answers to enchantments like rest in peace can also be important, but uh, get lost can fix that pretty easily. And especially if you also have a few copies of get lost in the main deck, since you may not be all that worried about the Monorad aggro deck in best of three, you can also make that swap pretty easily. So there's a lot of ways to configure the deck, can also take some inspiration from our opponent that was playing the black-white reanimator deck, so there's quite a few options available. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.